The uh, reading for this morning is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the days of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar that crosses their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness for that time and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Awesome. I hope we've had some great insights. Um, it is my uh, privilege to um, welcome uh, Mark Huang to come and preach this morning. Um, uh, Mark will be known to many of you. He's been part of this uh, congregation for quite a long time, um, but many of you may know him as he looks into the back of your mouth as one of our uh, uh, city dentists. Um, and uh, um, uh, But Mark is in the process at the moment discerning a call for ordination, um, which we're really excited about. And um, Mark, along with uh, seven others in this parish, are going through that process. And, um, and so we uh, are giving opportunities for them to express their God-given gifts and their call and so Mark is preaching for the first time in his life this morning, which is really exciting. It's not entirely true because Mark invited me to speak at the uh, um, Chinese Christian Fellowship that Mark leads uh, in his house, um, and uh, and I came to preach there um, just a few weeks ago. And um, Mark was translating, but um, I'm pretty sure he was adding in extra words and correcting my theology as he went. So uh, so Mark did preach a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, but no, it's a delight to have you, Mark. Let me pray as you come to speak. Jesus, we thank you so much for Mark. We thank you for your anointing and your blessing upon his life. We thank you for his wisdom, for his experience, his knowledge. But Jesus, we pray that this morning, that as he comes and speaks, you would use him as a vessel for your kingdom purposes. That we would hear you speaking. That you would come and soften our hearts. And this time would be about you and your growing your kingdom in and through us, we pray. So bless this place. Bless us, bless Mark, bless us, that we would hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tēnā koutou e te wānau, ko haere mai nei ki tēnei ware karakia ki te ako e te paipera tapu. Kanui te aroha mō te koutou kai ngāko ki te haere mai ki te whakarongo i ngā pito pito kōrero e pā ana ki te atua. Ko Arishan te manga, ko Pajangshi te awa, ke Kate Pacifica te waka. Ko te kainga o oku mā tua toku marae. Ko Huang toku iwi, ko Shen toku hapu. Ko Ikwe Huang toku papa, Ko Chen Yushen toku mama, ko Kero Huang toku hua wahine, ko Jacob rato ko Ishtan ko Sofia toku tamariki. Ko Mark toku ingoa, norera tena koutou, tena koutou, tena koutou katoa. It's, um, it's, it's a privilege to be up here. As Caleb says, my first time preaching. Uh, normally I'll be sitting down there or there, listen to Caleb preach and uh, watch him draw a triangle of some sort. 
But today, um, yeah, I'll, 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 you know, being asked to come in and, and preach, and, um, and yes, we are in the process of um, uh, discerning for the nation, and it's a privilege to have you as the family in Christ to be um, part of um, my first um, sermon, and uh, I feel very privileged. Um, so we just read the, uh, the passage of Isaiah, uh, chapter 9, and the verse that stood out to me is verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. What does light mean to people? What does light mean to people living in darkness? I remember my um, first year study at the, uh, the University of Otago in Dunedin. As you all know, that's, uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty cold place. Um, after I completed my first semester, I went home to Auckland to, uh, to spend time with my family. Uh, at the end of the, the break, uh, it's time to go uh, to the airport to catch, to catch your flight back to Dunedin. Uh, I got to the, uh, the airport, I've just been told, oh, your flight is cancelled. What do I do? But they say, well, we can fly you down to Christchurch and we can, you know, um, uh, put you on a bus down to um, Dunedin. I said, well, okay, that's not too bad. You know, that's my only option. You know, I need to get down there before the, uh, the lecture starts. So I'll do that. Uh, so I hop on my plane and flew down to Christchurch. And yeah, the first half wasn't too bad. But then I hop on the bus. Uh, it's my first road trip from um, um, Christchurch to Dunedin. I, I really know no concept how long it's going to take. Uh, and uh, I, I, I've, I've just Googled at, uh, oh, well, GPS. It, um, it takes about four and a half hours um, from Christchurch to Dunedin. So there, there I was, you know, hop in the bus. Um, no idea how long it's going to take. I just sit it in there. And it's June, it's middle winter. And uh, uh, I, I don't recall the, um, uh, the heater of the bus worked terribly well. So there, there I was sitting there, you know, and, and it feels like the trip just goes on and on and on. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And most of parents can, you know, understand what it's like, you know. Your little kids ask, well, are we there yet? So towards the end of the journey, I was cold. I was tired. It's getting quite late. And, uh, I, you know, I was getting a bit, you know, um, uh, uh, restless. Oh, how long is this going to take? But I, I can still remember to this day that when I saw the, uh, the city light, there's a great relief, great sense of relief. And it's a joy because that means the wait is over. I'm there. I have arrived my destiny. Has any of you got experience like that? Light means everything to people living in darkness, or at least to people who know that live in darkness and eager to see the light. We just sang a song, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. In the darkness, there's the only bright light that a ship can see. And then when they see it, they know that's the direction. They go towards it. Now, let us take a quick look um, at the history. Um, this is my first time in my life I, I read the Bible. I mean, not, not the first time I read the Bible, but I read it in a way that, you know, I read Isaiah, and I go to uh, Kings II, and I go to Gideon, just to get the idea of what the passage is talking about. And that, a lot of things make sense, you know. I, I often think a book... It's beginning of, and finish of something, and then the next book start, and the next book start. But it's not. In the Old Testament, it's all, you know, intertwined together. You, you've got to read everything and understand to get a full picture. So, so uh, let, let's talk about a little bit of history. And during the time of Isaiah, the nation of Israel already divided into the northern kingdom, still called the name uh, Israel, and southern kingdom called Judah. And as we can imagine, a divided nation there's little harmony and there's often friction. 
Uh, not only they lack sibling love for each other, the nation had turned a deaf ear to the Lord. Uh, they sacrificed their children to foreign gods, they oppressed the poor, and they put their people in great sin. Now we can see why the Bible describes that people are walking in darkness and are living in the land of the dead, shadow of death. There's gloom and there's distress among the people. Isaiah, at the time in history, um, he spoke in God's behalf to the leaders of Jerusalem. He warned that their sin and rebellion against God will lead to God using great empire of Assyria and Babylon to judge Jerusalem if they carry on with their sin and oppression to the poor. But this message also combined with a message of hope, as we read earlier. The light is coming and a child will be born to them. Uh, sadly, Israel continued to live in sin and as Isaiah prophesied, the nation was destroyed by Israel and Bar later Babylon and were well, taken exile. Other people continued to wait. After that, people continued to wait for the light that was promised. And today, how privileged we are. We're living in the New Testament. We saw that promise fulfilled in the New Testament in Jesus. The book of Matthew testified that in Matthew chapter 4, um, Verse 13 to 16, it says, Leaving Nazareth, Jesus went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea among the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light was dawned. And also in John chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness does not understand it. Through him, all things were made. Through Jesus, all things were made. He was the author of the universe. He knows our problems. He knows us through and through. Because he's the light. Nothing can hide in the presence of light. And also in John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus testified for himself. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The darker the place, the more it needs light. I know about darkness because in my profession, I work in dark holes. <laughs> I'm the dentist, as you know, Caleb uh, you know, introduced me. And, and, and so, so, you know, inside the dark holes. So I make sure my room, the ceiling light is nice and bright so I can see my patients. But that's not enough. I need a dental chair light that I can maneuver to direct the light to the place of interest. But that's not enough. I wear the little loop headlight. Some of you have seen me wearing that, walking around like a miner. And that bright, little bright light allowed me to see what's in the mouth, allow me to expose the decay, allow me to expose the crack. Then I know what's in there, how to fix it. So, I'm going to learn from Jesus. Jesus speak in parables. Uh, I, I'm going to use parables here. My first parable is, Jesus is like a dental light. He exposes. Jesus, the light of the world, he came to show us the way. When we encounter Jesus, yes, our sins are exposed. Our every single imperfection, our evil doing, our evil thoughts, it's all there. Nothing to hide. But that's okay. Jesus said, come to me. I come to seek the lost. I come to heal the sick. 
No one under the sun is righteous. And we all fall short of glory of God. And that is the very reason why he came. He said, he's the way, he's the truth, he is life. Came to me and I'll give you life and give you life to the full. So let us not be scared of the light unless you enjoy living in darkness. There was once my kids were sitting in a lounge watching TV in the late afternoon and it's, you know, as the movie goes on, it started to get dark. So they really get a feeling of, wow, this is like a movie theater. They're eating their popcorn, they're watching their movie in darkness. And then suddenly, my wife, Carol, showed up saying, oh, man, it's too dark, bear for your eyes, switch on the light. And my kids, oh, no, 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 take off the light. It's too bright for that. I will want to see that. You don't want to feel like a movie theater. So, unless you enjoy living in darkness, uh, that's when you don't want the light. In the New Testament, when Jesus started his ministry, he performed miracles and he taught with authority. The Pharisees and the priests rejected Jesus and they questioned, by what authority did you do all this? After Jesus told them, they hated them even more. They rejected the light they were waiting for because their hypocrisy was exposed. The way they lived did not match the way they taught. And Jesus questioned their heart and challenged their authority. And they didn't like it. They didn't like, they didn't like the way they've been exposed by Jesus, by this great light. So they wanted to get rid of Jesus. There's another story in the New Testament. You probably all heard that it's a Samaritan woman. She was so ashamed of her life. She came to withdraw water in the well, in the middle of the day, in the heat where there's nobody. He came to draw water, and Jesus was there asking her for water. She said, you are a Jewish man. How can you ask me, a Samaritan woman, for that? You know, at that stage, at that, at that, at that time era, women are of a lower grade. And Jewish people don't have association with Samaria. And so he said, why do you do that to me? You know, why do you ask me? And Jesus said, you don't know who you are talking to. And Jesus said, bring your husband. I have no husband. Jesus said, you have five husbands. And now, now the, you had five husbands before. Now this man you're with is not your husband. So this woman was widely exposed in front of Jesus. But after encountering with Jesus, her life is different. Because Jesus offered her something great, a living water. She went back to town, tell everybody, look, this man exposed me. So what she was ashamed of, beginning, she's no longer ashamed of because that sin has been taken off. She has seen the great light. So of these two people, totally different reaction towards the true light. Now, in John chapter 3, verse 19 to 20, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because of their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that the deed will be exposed. So my first question for you all is, where are you in light? Are you coming to embrace the light like the Samaritan woman? Or are you hiding from it? Or are you rejecting it? Like the Pharisees and the high priest in Jesus' time. Now my second parable is that Jesus is like laser beam. He cuts but heals. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Very mouthful. But as we all know, the laser beam is powerful. And laser is widely used in medical and dental field. Laser make precise cut in skillful hands, in the hands of surgeon, to remove unhealthy tissue to restore health. In the skillful hand of dentist, it removes decay, so dentists can place fillings to restore the tooth to health. When Jesus exposed our sin and our wrongdoing, 
He invites us to give our wrongdoing, our sins to Him. He's like a surgeon who offers to, re- offers to re- remove those unhealthy, malignant things in our body so that we may live. We may live. I'm sure each of us know which part of our life needs to be exposed, needs to be taken care of by Jesus because you're always still here in the light of Jesus, nothing to hide. So when we are exposed in our deepest darkness, what do we do? What do we do? Well, what's our response? The part of us need to go is our old self. As we witnessed the other day, Carl's baptism. In Romans chapter 4, chapter 6, 4, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. When we lay down our old self, Jesus promised to give us new life. Give us a, give, give us a new life, a new beginning. John chapter 12, 24. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. People when find following Jesus inconvenient. We need to be honest in our business. He calls us to give our resource to the poor and needy. It requires us putting down our ego to look after the people around me. It wants me to put down my pride so that I can humble in front of my wife, my kids, and and take good care of them. There is a cost. And in that very, but we need to know the very area we need to be, we need to have a cut away. With a laser beam, it is the area that we really need to let go so Jesus can come and restore our life. In Mark chapter 10, verse 29 to 30, I tell you the truth, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brother or sister or mother or father or children or fields for me in the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much as this present age and in the age to come eternal life. So when we lay down our old self to Jesus, when we lay down ourself, Jesus promise, Jesus promise, what is going to give us us is far better than what we lay down for him. So it's a great deal, guys. So the same question, where are we in light? Are we willing to let Jesus operate on us that we may have a new life? a more fruitful life, or are we hiding from him? My third parable, and the last parable, is that Jesus is like sunlight. He maintains, sustains, and regulates our health. Sunlight makes everything grow. And when we're exposed under the sunlight for a period of time, it enables our body to produce vitamin D. And that is of Paramount importance to our bone health. And also, it regulates our mood. Uh, our, our mood. And that is why uh, in the middle of winter, people are more prone to depression because they're not getting enough sunlight. This is an incredible um, uh, property that the sun has for our body. So spending time under the sun, it's like spending time with Jesus, in reading Bible, in prayer, Help us to stay in tune with God and give us a good spiritual health. In John chapter 15, 4, Jesus said, Remain in me and I'll remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. That is Jesus calling for us. So the question I have for you is, where are you in light? Are we spending enough time with Jesus each day like we should under the sun? So, 
Or are we not spending time under the sun, not spending time with Jesus, and hoping, fingers crossed, we won't get sick physically or spiritually? The true light of man is here. He came to give us a life, a life to the full. So the question I have for you is, where are you in light? Where are you in this true light? Let me pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you. You are the light that was prophesied in Isaiah's time. You are the light that we have been waiting, we have been expecting, Lord. You came to the world in the darkness. You give us guidance. Lord, we thank you that you love us so much. And Lord, we thank you that you said, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Lord, we pray that you open our eyes. Help us to see your beauty. Help us to embrace you as the true light of the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the salvation you have achieved for us. Thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.